I'm Jamie with the Yeti Snow MX. And I'm Kevin with the Yeti Snow MX. And here we got Rob. Rob. With the Yeti Snow MX. All right. Thought we'd cut a video today because we want to introduce all our Yeti Snow MX customers and dealers to Rob. And so we're going to spend a little time sharing stories about Rob, why we've chosen Rob from all the millions of guys in the world to ride and work with us. And Rob is our uh, Yeti Snow MX team leader. So he will be the main guy at Yeti working with Kevin and I and the rest of the team. So. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's been about uh, three weeks since we bought Yeti. We just had all the uh, parts show up from uh, mm -hmm. Quebec here. So we're trying to get organized. Yeah. Uh, Rob's just got back from Quebec. Had uh, a fun time there, getting everything loaded up. And uh, so we thought we'd just shoot a quick little video to kind of say, hey, we're here, we're getting ready. Give you guys an update and introduce you to Rob. And, and maybe Rob can uh, tell us a little bit of his story. Yeah. Well, um, Yeti Snow Max is uh, the intro video already led to believe, right? Was uh, was born by these two guys and then sold back in 2017. And throughout the, the 16, 17 year, uh, I was lucky enough. I was in the, the same area the Yeti headquarters at that time was. And mm -hmm. uh, so literally uh, kind of a, a crazy old Husaberg story is how Jamie uh, and I began to, mm -hmm. our relationship and, and buying um, crappy old Husaberg parts from him yeah, yeah. Uh, that he was, you yeah. know, I showed up in this guy's uh, place and he had, you know, a few different uh, snow bike kits and I had recently just purchased back in probably 13 and uh, that was kind of my first intro into snow biking and the usual, you know, uh, Jamie's good at uh, building pipe and we started a relationship based on a track and old Husaberg parts and that's how it kind of grew and back in. Yeah. The end, then uh, you know, Yeti left, and at that time I was Riverside employee. Um, is how I was fortunate enough to do a nine to five there, and then work with uh, both Kevin and Jamie um, yeah. after hours. Uh, so, but, so where did we first meet? Was it uh, you were working at Riverside, but you were coming to uh, our shop up in Saint Albert and, and yeah. helping us put Yetis together when we first started back in 2016? That was the origins. Yeah, right? that yeah, is how yeah. it started. I remember so. that. I remember. So Rob was coming at night um trying helping us put the kids together yep. right so every other night and we we odd time we posted a little picture of what we were doing and all of a sudden danny from riverside phones mm. me and says hey jamie uh <laughs> you're not trying to steal rob from me are you i'm like no no danny don't worry i'm not trying to steal rob but you know i had to diffuse yeah. that a little bit but rob came every night for years really and that was a great relationship we just kind of grew so rob's got experience right from right from day one building the kids with yeah. us yeah put a lot of loctite on a lot of bolts that's how it all started <laughs> And, uh, yeah, and that's how it grew. And I think that was, yeah, uh, Kevin and I didn't have the chance to ride together for probably uh, a couple of years. Um, I mean, their schedules were crazy. If anybody, uh, is familiar with the guys when they first originally built Yeti, yeah. um, there were bags under their eyes and I'm pretty <laughs> sure they worked about 22 hours of every day. And, uh, and that's how it started. And, uh, you know, so hopefully that's the goal is they're trying to make me work 22 hours a day yeah. so that they don't have to, um, yeah. But uh, but everything's already kind of into motion, right? And so happy to happy to be back. Uh, you know, not working the midnight shift uh, after I've worked a nine to five, but having a full time gig here in uh, yeah. in Canoe, BC, and uh, yeah, and starting the journey with uh, the original mm -hmm. gentleman once over again. Yeah, it's great. We're we're glad to have you yeah. aboard, and uh, really appreciate it. Uh, I'm looking forward to the journey. Yeah, and uh, from what we see from the product that we got, we're. Uh, we're going to get into it this year and it's going to be fun. It was only something like 163 or four pallets that <laughs> kind of wandered their way towards us from, yeah. uh, as Kevin mentioned, from Quebec to here. So, yeah, um, yeah. it is absolute chaos here right now, as you can yeah. see Boxes. in the background. Yeah, so. That's only a very minuscule <laughs> proportion of, of what is actually around here right now and what needs to be organized. But, uh, you know, there's uh, C3 already has a, a good team in place to kind of help with uh, a lot of that. So unfortunately, their uh, their resources are going to be exhausted helping Yeti, um, Snow and Max try to, you know, mend and uh, and get organized at the very beginning. So uh, I Excellent. do appreciate that. So Yeah, yeah, 100 yeah. percent. And I think, you know, I, I have to give Rob credits. You know, we sent Rob uh, all by himself to Quebec to load up everything. Hmm. And he learned to speak French, I think. Uh, <laughs> In a matter of a week and a half. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So, I mean, that was a big effort. You're there almost a week and a, yeah. a week and a bit. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We were, the game plan was to get everything, you know, there packed in a week was Kev's hope. Right. Yeah. That, was, that was his game plan. And, uh, 
Uh, we certainly found out very quickly that day one that was not a reality, but yeah. uh, it did get done fairly efficiently, uh, you know, with the help of uh, the Michelin team slash Camzo, and then yeah. obviously all the work that the C3 team had already put into place to make all that happen, right? Yeah. So the guys made it a fairly uh, uh, nonchalant journey besides, uh, you know, eating a lot of poutine and, yeah, uh, putting yeah. in some hours on the phone to, to get things organized. Uh, it was a decent trip. Yeah, excellent. Yeah. So uh, when you guys call this winter and uh, hopefully you're buying lots of Yeti kits and parts, yeah. uh, Rob's going to be the guy on the phone. Just so you actually believe he rides snow bikes and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Maybe maybe you could tell us about a good experience you had one of our first rides or a more memorable ride that you had with us. Yeah, I was trying to think back to uh, some of our first rides together. Yeah. Ben, yeah. I mean, there's been a lot of us riding together, particularly myself and Jamie. And then Kevin yeah. is still obviously busy with C3 and Jamie is as well so we don't get out to ride as much uh, together but the most memorable time had to be uh, Jamie uh, and one of his uh, other employees had uh, adventured out on a spring ride and so the short yeah. is is that it was a beautiful day you would have never expected it it was in May we were riding and we had awesome. you know driven up this logging road and now we're you know probably four hours six hours later and uh, something just sounded weird when I shut off my bike. And so it turns out that the timing chain had skipped and, uh, I ride a kickstart, uh, bike because I don't ever want to have a dead battery. So now I have a skip chain and the short is we fix it approximately four times and you couldn't have really wanted us to be any further in the wrong spot than we possibly were. Yeah, so we 100%. finally get it fixed and we decide that we are on a no stop occasion. So. Fast forward, we make it safely back to the truck, life is grand. So Kevin is gonna meet us the next day for a riding. And they show up the next night and, you know, the night of, and, you know, we're talking about this story, how we fixed this chain, you know, four, four times. times. on the hill. Right? We talked about pulling the cams, you know, timing the, like, not a fun experience on the mountain. Or when somebody strips your cam cap bolts. Well, yeah, I got a little aggressive tightening some bolts there, because it was like the third time, he's getting kind of angry, you know, yeah. we're tightening this thing again. We're our... losing out on riding time, I think, was the issue. <laughs> yeah. So we make it back and all is good. And we're telling the story to Kevin and, uh, you know, fast forward the next morning and uh, he he expects we do have, you know, other bikes we could have ridden. And uh, so he looks rather shocked when I pull out trusty old steed that wasn't very trusty anymore. So he decides to pose the question of, uh, so did, did you fix like your cam chain issue last night? And I went, mm, well, we fixed it like on our way out and then i stopped it at the truck and it didn't skip so yeah it's gotta be good it's gotta be good we're gonna ride <laughs> he just shook his head so fast forward we go and now we're into an hour two three uh, into the alpine and uh everybody's a little bit suspicious about me and i'm trying to be super cautious and and not do anything mm -hmm. and sure enough cam chain skips way in the back so we're also in a spot where we don't want to be and uh <laughs> The, the usual happens, right? And uh, so we let Rob play with his kind of <laughs> yeah, we, we let him fix <laughs> change while, while we, we went, went and rode. Burnt and gas. Yeah. yeah. So these two lads burnt gas, right? And uh, so I decided I'm going to take this thing apart. And uh, what I've never done before is I've replaced a can, you know, a timing chain. Obviously, that wasn't going to happen. I didn't have a spare Z in my back pocket, but I did have a cam chain tensioner that I had never taken apart before. And I thought, well, the same thing keeps reoccurring. There must be an issue, obviously. We're now into time number five that I fixed it. So I decide that I'm going to take a cam chain tensioner apart and in the Alpine yeah. on a little on side, yeah, side little mountain. microfiber yeah. cloth and not lose <laughs> anything and hope for the best. And so, <laughs> so it all worked out in the end and uh, and we made it back. And uh, I'm pretty sure I rode that uh, maybe one other time uh, again that season just to make sure that I fixed it correctly in the, the back 40 of the Alpine. But you know, the shenanigans that Kevin and Jamie put up with, uh, not just with me, they also put me through some shenanigans. Um, it builds relationships, right? So I think that's the the main point to be taken away. And, and hopefully, uh, you know, I can help every, you know, buddy watching this video with some of those shenanigans, not timing chain problems. They will only be related to Yeti, Snow and Max problems. Yeah. And, and that reminds me, you know, when we get in the back country, we want our stuff to be as reliable as possible. It's the biggest thing we're, we have worked on with Yeti and are going to continue to work on in the future. Um, and you want to be able to trust the people you're back there with and know yeah. they got your back. And, and that's kind of the same thing here. And, and we feel that with 
introducing Rob and him going to run Yeti for us is that, you know, he's got her back. He's got her best interest in mind and he knows the product yeah. as good as anybody or better. And, uh, I think it's going to be a great uh, venture. So yeah, we're excited, really excited to have Rob on our team. And I've ridden with Rob obviously lots and been there many times and we've helped customers on the hill. Didn't matter if they had any, any brand of units, could be yeah. a summer site, could yeah. be anything. Yeah. Council yeah. Kit. Everybody comes back off, right? Yeah. So, so we just yeah. get everybody out. And I think it's that spirit of, you know, we care about snow bikers. We want to build the most kick-ass products. We want to stand behind the brand. And yeah. so we're excited to have Rob on the team. Yeah. yeah. It'll and be fun. And it means a lot that uh, that you know I was even considered to to be part of. I mean, uh, you know, it's every uh, you know anybody who is passionate, you know, and every boy's little dream when you walk in and everybody, you know, if you remember our original Yeti videos that uh, they were shot, um, mm -hmm. you know, they're in this you know beautiful place, right? And there you open up a drawer and there's just titanium bolts yeah. that pull out, and you're like, oh, I need all of these. <laughs> and uh, you know, now's the chance, except for. I feel like it's a little different when you know you're the, you're now the owner of all of yeah, these all little these parts. shiny parts, and you're like, yeah, you can't have any of those. Those aren't free. They're going to kits and customers, and uh, so yeah, it changed a little bit, but uh, but I do appreciate the trust that uh, uh, mm -hmm. these two gentlemen have you know put into me, and uh, and hopefully uh, the the clientele will as well. Yeah, so we're excited for the journey. Um, in the next few weeks, we're just going to continue to bring out videos, update yeah. you. Um, on what we know when we know it. Uh, we're putting together a really good plan to get as many kits out this year. Yep. And uh, we're going to keep delivering that kind of content and video and, and we'll get into some more technical stuff yep. after that. But, uh, you know, please keep checking back. And uh, man, we're, we're glad to have everyone along for the journey and, and start this over again and, yeah. and do Super it right. Exciting.